Welcome back to the Oscar Pistorius Trial Channel. We continue tonight's roundtable debate with former Judge Chris Greenland, Defence Attorney René Spies and Professor James Grant from Wits University. If you have questions for my guests, tweet them at us, uh, at, uh, to us using the hashtag roundtable199. Now, uh, I, I said I was not going to do this chronologically, so I'll continue to mix it up. But let us talk about, I think one of the most immediate things we saw was the, the difference in style of, uh, between Barry and Gerinel. I know there was a lot of criticism early on from the lay public saying, well, why is Barry Roo such a bully and Gerinel such a tame puppy? Now we've seen the, the roles being reversed. So, Renier, you had been warning us about the tenaciousness of Gerinel's cross-examination. There it was. Yes, you know, everybody was criticizing Gerinel during the state's case for being too timid. What is yes. he doing? He's just simply asking questions and sitting back, and Barry Roo is being this robust person, uh, you know, that badges the witnesses and so forth. He's basically leading the state's case, and now he's showing himself to be the very accomplished cross-examiner that he is. Now, if the statement that 90% of all communication is non-verbal, then Harry Nell's cross-examination at this stage is very good. If you watch his body language, forget about what he's saying. <coughs> his demeanor, his, he would stand back, his facial expressions, the way he moves with his hands, he lives himself into that position. There was instances today during cross-examination of the very learned professor where he bends over forward. Uh, he's, you know, he, at, at times he's sarcastic, Mm. Uh, he pushes that boundary constantly, and it is about getting the witness out of his comfort zone. Right. Getting the heart rate up and starting to test that version. And it's at, at, at certain times, you could hear the witness getting agitated and irritated. Um, I mean, at On some several stage, occasions, yeah, certainly. He no, addressed I mean, him and said, Mr. Nell. And, and and can you yeah. imagine what he's going to do with the greatest of respect to Mr. Pistorius, who's been crying in the witness stand right from the beginning? Yes. Chris? I think what's also important from the public's point of view, this is not a jury trial. Yes. We don't have a jury. So under our system with a very experienced judge and competent assessors, uh, these subjective attributes on the part of counsel actually count for very, very little. What actually counts is what is actually said. In other words, the effectiveness of the cross-examination. And that will appear on the record. Yes. Especially because these cases inevitably end up on appeal. The appeal court won't be seeing counsel, flamboyant or otherwise. The appeal court will be going on what was actually said. Yes. So from my point of view as a judge, I'm only interested in the effectiveness of the uh, the questions that were put, how they were put. And just by way of uh, observation here, in my experience, the best cross examiners ask simple questions with superb bedside manner, and you don't see uh, your downfall coming. Well, then Chris would have warned me many times for <laughs> possible contempt of court. I must, and I'm sorry, James. To interrupt, I must interlude, and with the greatest of respect, I have the opportunity. Uh, to raise my view in a position Why is it when you say with the greatest respect? Well, I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting next to a high court judge, so obviously... You know, I hope deep, they all deep right. sense of irony. I hope yeah. they all the the I'll take them out. The answers that you get are due to, certainly, content. But it cannot only be verbal content. Because eventually the effectiveness of that cross-examination will be tested on the answers that the witness gets. And one of the things about cross-examination is to rattle the witness in plain layman English. Yes. Get the witness rattled, get him to contradict himself, get him to be unable to explain himself. And sometimes, at the risk of being presumptuous, that takes a degree of shenanigan from the litigator. Now, <laughs> you obviously know what my style is I think now. we do know that stuff. James, um, some thoughts on that? For what it's worth, um, I think he adopted a very uh, aggressive, antagonistic uh, style, um, and I would have been concerned uh, about that. Uh, I, ex I would have expected that uh, the learned professor would have responded in a like manner. I uh, was surprised to see that the learned professor was, in fact, intimidated from what I could gather and, in fact, made 
um, significant concessions. Yes. Um, and which that is, proves which my point. goes on the record. So this goes with both of what you're saying. It's consistent for both of you, right? <laughs> on the record is what matters. And uh, Harinal Stahl, uh, Stahl managed to, to extract that Let, from the record. Yes, and what is on the record the is the professor that concedes, I'm unable. In fact, it is very likely that the head wound was not the first shot. Was the last was shot. not the yeah. second shot. In fact, it was the last shot. And that's the critical concession Absolutely. that Ferdinand got out Absolutely. of that cross-examination. Were there other key concessions that he got out of his witness? Out of this witness, I beg your pardon. Not his witness. Well, that he couldn't contradict what, uh, I think it was Professor Simon, Simon said Simon. about the uh, digestive... Uh, functioning, uh, and that she didn't, in fact, have a light meal at one o'clock or so. Um, he ended up conceding that it's entirely uh, possible that uh, Professor Simon was was correct. But I think what's already been pointed out by Ranir here is that uh, the the concession on behalf of this expert that the first shot was to the hip is critical. Uh, Ranir, what was the importance of the evidence about the body position and the way in which Riva fell? Of what assistance is, do you think that that could be to the court? Well, remember, it's the state's case that in all probability she fled from Mr. Pistorius, hid behind that door. That's why she locked it. So she would have been in a position that supports that notion. And that is why it's so important to establish what her position was when the first shot was fired. Secondly, the cognitive functions of the deceased at the time of the firing of those shots, at what stage did they cease to exist? And that is why the head wound, said with respect, is uh, so important. Mm. Uh, it also deals with the fact that Oscar Pastorius, his defense team will in all probability argue that she went to the bathroom to answer to a call of nature. So right. this was an unfortunate circumstance which led to this huge tragedy. And that is why the body position when that first shot was fired and subsequent shots was fired is so, is so the important. The position of the clothing is important now. Absolutely. The amount of urine in the bladder is yes, important. Yes, because they're going to allege that she was in all probability on the loo uh, emptying her bladder when, when this, when this uh, occurred. But the critical thing is the screams, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's why the, the, the head wound is the important one. Chris? Yeah, on your question about possible concessions that he got out of the witness, I thought the big one, and you must remember why this fight is on, it's all because the state is alleging that Riva did scream after the first shot was fired. And that's why we're having a a contest between the experts. I thought where Herinel did very well was to trap, well apparently trap, I'll put it no higher than that, uh, uh, Professor Botha, into having to admit that in order to come to his findings as to the sequence of the shots and the body positions, he had to um, include ballistic aspect. Uh, it's a matter of looking at the injury and also knowing where the bullets came from. And uh, the, the prof had to accept that he more or less disregarded the yep. ballistic as aspect uh, entirely. So Herinel said so. Your opinion is fatally flawed. I'm going to raise the issue with our panel as well about the, the double tap, which now is no longer part of the defense case. And uh, I think it's uh, possibly surprised many of us who have been watching this trial avidly. We'll continue with this discussion with the legal panel right after the break. We'll all answer your legal questions as well. That's the, the questions that have been tweeted to us at OscarTrial199 using the hashtag Roundtable199. Don't go away.